Hi guys, thanks for joining me on my channel and if you want to watch my live videos that I've uh, made today across my Facebook pages then you can head on over to there to my coaching page, Coach Marianne Hansen, my business page, NU Journeys Counselling, my personal page, Marianne Hansen and my debt support page called The Debt Free Life. So I thought I'll just quickly jump on here and make a few videos for my YouTube subscribers. Thank you to everyone that subscribed to my channel recently. And I will try to aim for posting at least one new video each week. If it can be more then, um, yeah, eventually I'll get to two or three a week. But I hope you found um, the videos that are on my channels useful and thank you for your contribution. So what I want to talk about in this video is how cheating can affect an individual's self-esteem. As I said, I'll go live on my Facebook page so you can also head on over there to see this same video but the live stream version. <laughs> um, so yeah, we all know cheating occurs in lots of relationships and that people's definitions of what they would regard as cheating are different to some people. If you even send a text message to um, someone outside of the relationship, that's not acceptable. Um, with the whole social media thing, many people regard sending direct messages, private messaging, that can be classed as cheating to some couples. To others, it has to be you know, physical. You can verbally flirt, you can talk to someone, but if you um, have sex with someone or anything intimate, then that's classed as cheating. It's not really down to any other person to define what cheating is to someone else. It's down to them. It's the couples that are in that relationship. But for people who have been the victim of cheating, it can have a really negative impact on their self-esteem and it can affect them in a number of ways, which I'm going to talk to you about now. Um, but the one thing I want to sort of stress is that it's important for you that if you have been cheated on, that you don't blame yourself that you continue to work on yourself emotionally and not allow this situation to overwhelm you um, because that's I think where people then start to go down and their self-esteem becomes a lot worse because they kind of look at the situation and then they make it be about them they'll say I blame myself it's my fault I could have done a b or c it must mean this or it must mean that so I just want to talk you through some of the ways that a person might feel if they've been cheated on and how self-esteem may affect them. They might feel that they're to blame, it's their fault, it was something they didn't do. We all hear when people say things like, my wife or my partner wouldn't give me this particular type of sex or wouldn't do this or wouldn't do that so I went somewhere else to get it. What I would say to anyone is that that is still doesn't mean you're to blame. You have choices as an individual, even if you're part of a relationship. And if someone decides to take an action, it's still down to them. Ultimately, we're responsible for our own actions. So you should never internalize or blame yourself for anything your partner does. You might feel unattractive, undesirable. This is a thing that happens to many people. I know that if in the past, if I've, when I've been cheated on in a few of my relationships, I've questioned, you know, was it was it me that they really wanted? Or especially if someone cheats with someone who's completely the opposite to you. So you could be in a relationship with someone where they're continuously saying, I really like this type of woman, you know, someone who's fit, has a particular physical shape, who has a particular hairstyle or whatever, and then they could cheat with the opposite to that. That could leave the person questioning is it me that they really want or is the person they cheated with really their type but what you have to think about is it's sometimes just about the opportunity and the fact that the person made a decision to cheat with the person there and then it has nothing to do with you a lot of times or have anything to do with how that person looked it could just be they wanted a quick thrill they wanted um the opportunity brought itself and they thought, you know, I'm going to get away with this, no consequences. So it's never usually about they don't want to be with you, they want to be with this other person. Because if that were the case, they wouldn't have been attracted to you and in a relationship with you in the first place. Um, people can also feel afterwards a lot of anxiety about it happening again. Not being able to trust themselves. 
not being able to trust their partner. And then this feeling where you're in this circle, cycle where you're just on edge, the both of you are on edge because your partner's low self-esteem is then creating insecurities within the whole relationship. They don't want you to go out without them. They don't want you looking at certain people on the TV. They don't want you reading certain magazines just in case you know you feel that person's more attractive. It's it's just um, it's a losing battle that you're going to be in. I think in any relationship where you don't have trust or where you were just trying to control someone else, you can never win because you can't control someone. You can't control everything they do. You see things where you see people saying, "Why have you look? Why are you looking over there?" or I just saw you notice that woman when she went past or you were smiling with the waitress, you know what I mean, or anything. And it's always interesting to me because I suppose I'm, even if I felt jealous in my relationships, a slight tinge of jealousy, I would still control it just because of the fact that the minute I voice the fact that I don't like you flirting with the waitress, and what, and, and there is a line because you've got to have standards, but if someone is that like obsessed about you smiling or looking, you can't control someone's eyes or what they say. And the thing is, if I trust that person that they're not going to dump me and go and sleep with the waitress, I don't care if they're smiling with her. Um, you've got to have that sense of strength within yourself. And I think if you've been cheated on, your low self, your self esteem is going to drop a little bit and you may become more, um, anxious and you may become more insecure so the thing to do with that is that you need to first of all identify it recognize that possibly it's an overreaction because before you wouldn't have been like that but also it's not up to you to control your partner tell them that it's up to them to control themselves say so you're the one that cheated so i want you to have more self-control more self-discipline i'm not going to follow you around check your pockets check your phone ask for all your passwords, follow you everywhere you go, because think about it for a minute, that means you're doing more work in the relationship, if you have to do all of that, you become that person's jailer, um, you know, I call it <laughs> these types of relationships, um, prisoner and prison guard, because if you have to do that amount of things to make sure your partner doesn't stray, you're working harder than they are, all they have to do is not stray, not cheat, you have to do all the checking, all this. So you put it back to them, say to them, I'm feeling insecure right now. I'm feeling undesirable because of what's happened. What I want you to do is to provide me with some reassurance or I trust you enough because we're going to put this behind us. You know, and, and tell them if, if I catch you doing it again or if it happens again, I'm out of here. And then put let them, you know, um, have that pressure, not you. So obviously... Another um, key thing, if you've been cheated on, is that your low, your self-esteem is affected because you don't feel good enough. And especially if you didn't feel good enough before the cheating, afterwards you definitely won't. And you might feel you have to change yourself. You might think that there's something you have to do. You have to be different. You know, if it didn't work before, our relationship didn't work before, now I have to become a different type of person. Now I have to look different. Now I have to act different and maybe the person will stay. But none of those things are going to work because you can't convince, persuade, force or keep someone to ransom in a relationship. You know, you, someone, could go and <laughs> someone could go down the road and post a letter and they could meet someone at the, I don't know, post box. And then they could take their number. And then when they're ready, they could decide to meet up with that person and cheat. The point is, whatever action they're going to take, they're going to take that action. So as a person, all you can do is hold another person accountable. My feeling has always been, if someone cheats on me, then the relationship's over. Because I know that I'm not what they want. Because if they haven't got the discipline and the control to be just with me, then... I'd rather that they go and be with someone else. I'd, I'd rather someone comes home one day and dumped me and said, I can't be with you anymore. I've met this beautiful woman or I've met this person and I want to be with them. I'd have more respect for them. I'd be hurting, but I'd have more respect for them than if they stayed with me and cheated on me because that shows their character. And that is just my honest opinion and my view. So what I would say to people is don't allow the situation to overwhelm you, don't make this thing that happens identify you, 
and influence who you are. Don't become less than you were before it happened because it's not you, it's not about you, it's about them. Continue to work on your self-esteem every day. Build resilience so that nothing and no one can crush you. Do your affirmations, believe in your capabilities, work on your limiting beliefs. And if you need to, hire a coach. You know, I'm a confidence coach and a counsellor. If it means you have to invest in yourself and hire a person so that you can build your confidence back up if someone has cheated on you, do it. You know, do what you need to do to become the person you were before it happened. I don't think... If, say, you're married and you've got children or if you're in a long-term relationship and, I think, and there's a betrayal, I still I think that there's always going to be a part of you as a person most of the time that loses trust in not just your partner but in other people because you didn't see it come in, you wouldn't have expected it and then when it hits you, you're going to feel like you just wasn't prepared. So if it means you have to go and spend a bit, a few months working with someone for you to recognise that it was nothing you did, you're not to blame, and that you know your confidence and your self-esteem is still intact, then do it. You know because it's really important for you to recognise that if someone does something to you, they're they're still choosing, they're making that choice, and that's always been my belief, and that's what I'll always stick with. It doesn't mean I'm judging. I don't want people watching this to say they're not going to come and see me as a counsellor <laughs> as a couple. I've worked with couples where cheating has happened and I've not shown judgment towards the person who cheated and I've not been biased towards the person who was cheated on because that's not helpful for them. If you're working with a couple, you want to mend the relationship. So what's helpful? The first step has got to be accountability. If someone is making excuses for why they're cheated, it's her fault. Um, if she had done this, it's not always just men that cheat, women do as well. Um, if only this would have happened, it's because I was drunk, it's because this person came unto me. All these like all these excuses, because that's what they are, they're not reasons, doesn't stop the fact that you still made that choice. I've never cheated in my life and I've been in lots of relationships and I've been asked out by married men. I've been asked out by men who've clearly got girlfriends. They'll be on Facebook posing with their girlfriends, even engaged, and then they'll be inboxing me and asking for my number on WhatsApp. I've been chatted up um, by people where I know that if I did do something with them, my boyfriend wouldn't have found out. But my morals, but also my standards and my discipline mean that I would never cheat because I don't need to cheat. If I don't want to be with someone, then I'll dump them and go with the person I do want to be with. So don't ever think it's about you. Don't ever let your self-esteem be knocked or crushed or damaged by what the actions of another person so let me know what you guys think you probably all got some strong opinions on this because every single time cheating is discussed people have different views and opinions so i'd love to hear what you guys think let me know leave your comments below share this video with anyone you think it will be useful to and thank you to all my new subscribers i really appreciate you subscribing to my channel I'll be posting again soon. Take care. Have a great afternoon. Bye.